Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 93. Day 3093, 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 93. We are on page number 300 and we are dealing with Venn diagrams. We did uh, two problems yesterday on day number 92 and we did two before that, uh, day number 91. We are going to do two more today, problem number 5 and 6. These problems by the way are not in the book so don't try to look for them. Here is problem number 6. It says, problem number 5 rather, it says that we have a total of 400 and 50 students, of which we are told that 250 study chemistry. 250 study chemistry, they further on go on to tell us, they further go, go on to tell us that 320 also study math. Question, and, they, and we are finally told that at least 70, at least 70 study neither. The question is, given this, given this constraint, given these limitations, given these facts, what is the total number of students who study both languages. Total number of students who study both languages could fall within what range? Total number of students who study both languages could be A, could it be, could it be from 70 to 130, or B, from 90 to 150, or C, from 150 to 250, and D, 190 to 250, or finally E, from 190 to 320. Let's see what we can do. So here, these are what, what are known as at least and at most scenarios. There are two scenarios we'll have to look at, the two extreme scenarios, the least, at least scenario, the least number of study, uh, least number of students rather, who study neither, and the most number of students who study neither. And that will give us the range that we're looking for here. Let's get going, shall we? So let's first do the at least scenario. And that's very straightforward because we are told at least 70 is study neither. So 70 is going to go here in the universal set because they are not going to belong to either of these two sets, the two sets that we are going to draw here, the chemistry and the math. Chemistry and the math. And these 70 people study neither of them, so they go down there. Given the fact that 70 study neither and we are told that there are 450 total students, and given the fact that 70 in this scenario study neither, the difference here is 15 minus, 15 minus 7 is 8. That's right, 8. Because I was just adding them 5 plus 7 is 12 is what I was doing. You have to pay attention. And then we get 3. What does this 380 represent? This 380 represents the number of students. Number of students. who study chemistry or math or both, 380 students. But if we add up these two figures right here, right here, 250 and 320, we should, we should be doing this thing right underneath here, uh, let's just do it underneath here, 250 and 320, who study chemistry and math, if we add up these two figures, what do we get? We get 570. But here we know, here we know that if 70 is 30 neither, and if we only have a total of 450, then the, then the most that we can have, this is the most number of students who study either chemistry, math, or both. What's going on here? If we subtract 3, 380 here, 17 minus 8 would be 9, and 4 minus 3 would be 1. Where is this 190 coming from? This 190 represents the number of people. This is getting too low, I don't know if you can read it. This 190 are the people who are being double counted, which is why we have an overflow of it. The reason we have 
even though the actual number of people who study chemistry, math, or both is only 380, but when we add up these two figures, we end up getting 570, 570, but the actual number is only 380. The difference is 190. We have 190 here because these people are counted twice. They're double counted. They're counted once as study, people who study chemistry, and the same 190 people are being counted twice as people who study math. It goes in the middle. Let's start out from the beginning here. I should, this is, we should have put down the number first. So we know there are 250 who study chemistry, 320 who study math. And then we arrive at the conclusion that 190 of these people study both. It goes in the middle now. As soon as we put that in the middle, we cannot double count. We cannot put, the, put 190 people as count, studying both and also some of them study chemistry or some of them study they should say math. As soon as we put as soon as we put 190 in the middle, we have to go back and adjust this figure. So if we subtract 190, 190 from 250, we're going to get 60. And here 320, 320 minus 200 would have been 120. Therefore 320 minus 190 should be 130. There you go. So that's the first scenario. This is this is the least scenario, least number of study who, ni who study neither. And therefore, this is the least number of study who study least number of student rather who study both. Or rather, if this is the least, this is going to be the most. Or the smallest number of stu student, least number of student, least number of students. which means the correct answer, whatever it is, has to st start with 190, has to start with 190. Immediately we know that we can rule out A, B and C, they are gone. Answer has to be either either D or E. Now let's do the, now let's do the most, uh, at most scenario. We are done with this thing, let's do the second scenario, at most scenario. Okay, in the at most scenario, In the at most scenario, see so the starting point, the starting point for the at least scenario was the 70 that we put here. And the reason we were able to do that is because the problem tells us that at least 70 study neither. But we do not know what's the most number of study, no most number of students who study neither. So we cannot start out with this corner. We cannot start out by putting a number here because we do not know what is the largest number of study, largest number of students possible who study both. So we cannot start here. So let's first put down the figures. We know 250 study chemistry. We also know 320 study math. Now, if we want the number in the middle here to be as large as possible, large as possible, not as small as possible, as large as possible, what can we put here? Well, we can't put 320, we can't take 320 from here and put all of that here, because if we put here, we don't have, to, if we put 320 here, we have to subtract 320 from both of these numbers. We can't have negative number of people. We cannot have negative 70, obviously, because you cannot, because we're talking about people. The largest number that can go here in the common area, in this common area, is this 250 right here. We can put all of those people who are studying chemistry as the people who are also studying math. 250 students are studying chemistry. And it turns out that all of those 250 students who study, who are studying chemistry, are also taking math. That would work. And then if we subtract 250 from here, we get 70. Now let's see what happens. Now let's see what happens. It's the same scenario as before, except now we know we know 250. We know 250 are studying chemistry, right here. 320 are studying math, right here. This 380 that we came from, which was the fact that if 450 are total and 70 are studying neither, that was the first scenario. We are no longer dealing with it. Now we are going to claim, now let's figure out what number will go here. How many people study neither? Let's figure out that. Let's raise all of these numbers. If that's the case, if all, if all, 250, if all 250 students who are studying chemistry are also studying math, then what's the largest number of students that we can have? 
point splitting neighbor is very simple. You just add up these two figures, 250 plus 70 is 320 is 320, but we know we know the total number of students that we have is 450. If 450 is the total number of students, and out of those 450, 250 are studying both, 250 are studying both, and 70 of them are studying just math, only math, that gives us a total of 320. 15 minus, 5 minus 2 is 3. Who are these 130 people? Well, those 130 people must be the students who are studying neither. There we go. So here we go. So in this scenario, in this scenario, there is no student who is taking only chemistry. If there is a student who is taking chemistry, it turns out he or she is also taking math. All 250 of them. 70 students are taking only math. And of course, 250 are taking both. In this scenario, if that's the case, then 250 plus 70 adds up to only 320, but we have a total of 450 students. What about the remaining 130? Well, the remaining 130 must be the ones who are taking neither. So the range was, we just established here, from 190, there's a number of people are studying neither, but the question is asking, what's, what's the number of students who are studying both? So, don't get confused, before it was 70 was the, 70, 70 was the number of students who are studying neither, the, the least amount, and this is the most amount, this is neither. The least number of students who can study neither is 70, and the most number of students who can study neither is 130. But don't get confused, this is neither, that's not, answer is not A. We're not looking for number of students who are studying neither, it says number of students who are studying both, both, which is 250 here. And in the first scenario, in the, in the least scenario, it was 190. So we were down to D and E, is it, is it from 190 to 250, or is it from 190 to 320? We just established that it is from 190 to 250. The answer is D. It's not E. There we go. That's it. Let's do one more. And this time, this time I'm going to write down the problem on the blackboard. At that point, at which point you're going to pause the video and you'll, you'll do it yourself. And then compare your work against the work that you will do together. Okay, here we go. We are told that we have 400 students that were surveyed. We are further told that 260 perhaps they studied perhaps they studied 400 students in the music department and they found out that these 400 students that they surveyed out of those 400, 400 students 260 said, yes, I, I, I can play piano, I play piano. 300 also said that they play violin. We are further told that at least 60 play neither. They play neither instruments, or at the end of something else, maybe they are in the vocal thing and so forth. Perhaps they play some other instrument. The question again same is, the number of students, the question doesn't change, the number of students who, number of students who play both, who play both, not study, number of students who play both instruments, could be, Sixty to one hundred, eighty to one forty, one hundred to two sixty, two hundred and twenty to two sixty, 
and finally 220 to 300. One more time, the answer choices that we have are 60 to 100, 60 to 100, 80 to 140, 100 to 260, 220 to 260 or 220 to 300. I'll give you 5 seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Pause the video, do the problem yourself, it's the same setup, nothing has changed. Do it yourself and then compare your work against the work that we are about to do together, okay? So, so let's get going. So this time, just to, just to make it quicker and easier, Let's do both scenarios together. We'll have a nice juxtaposition of at least and at most scenario. So here is the at least scenario. And here is the at most. Okay? So. Piano. Violin, piano, violin, and this is at most, this is at least. The starting point is going to be the same, which is, we're going to put the numbers that are given to us. 260 play piano, and 300 plays violin. Now, this is our starting point, even though, even though the way it looks right now, it claims that 260 who play piano, only play piano, the way it's set here. But that's okay, we'll adjust as the time goes. So once we realize that some of them also play violin, we'll adjust the figure. But this is the starting point. Same thing here, 260 and 300. Since we're doing at least one scenario first, which is given to us, is 60. So that's given to us, that makes our life easier, that's 60. Let's add up these two figures. 300 plus 260 is 560, is 560 out of which 60 play neither, so that leaves us with 500. That leaves us with 500. It's too early for that. 260 plus 300 is 560. 560 this represents the number of students, 560 represents the number of students who play piano or violin or both. Number of students who play piano, violin or both. But we know that we have a total of only 400. We have a total of only 400 and out of those 400, 60 we are claiming, not we are not claiming, we are given here, that 60 play neither. If 60 play neither out of 400, that leaves us with only 340. Let's see what the difference is. 220. Who are these 220 people? These 220 people are the ones who are being double counted. One more time. But how do we arrive at 220? Well, we added up the people who we are told play violin or piano. Well, that comes out to be 560. But we know that the most number of students who can play either violin or piano or both has to be 340. It cannot be more than 340 because we only have 400 students of which 60 play neither. If 60 of these 400 students play neither, then only 340 must play one or both instruments. The difference is 220 because these two figures add up to 560. Where is this 220 coming from? Why do we have uh, the overflow of 220? These 220 people are being counted twice. They are counted first as the people who play violin, and the same 220 people are counted again as the people who play piano. It has to go in the middle. As soon as we put the figure there, we have to go and adjust it. This is going to become 40, and this is going to become 80. Oh, there you go, 220. Which means, which means, the number of students who play both Right here we found it. It has to start from 220. It has to start from 220. Answer is either D or E. It's not C, B or A. 
Now, having, having set up this thing, now let's do the at most scenario. At most scenario means what's the largest number that we can put here? What's the most number of students that can go here, who, number of students who play neither? If you want this figure to as large as possible, we want some of these three areas, the people who play only piano, people who play both, and people who play only violin. We want the sum of these three figures to be as small as possible. And the way we make the sum as small as possible is by putting the low, lower of these two numbers here. So obviously we can't put 300 because we won't be able to subtract 300 from 260. So we have done so. As, as soon as we put 260 here, this becomes 0, just like before. And this is going to become 40. Now watch what happens here. So now we are claiming that zero people play piano only. There is nobody who plays only piano. 260 play both in this scenario that we are doing. And 40 play only violin. That's only 300. We have a total of 400 students. We have a total of 400 students. The 100 is going to go here. In this scenario, there are going to be 100 students who will play neither. Do you understand? If that's the case, if 100 students play neither of the students, in that scenario, the most number of students that we can have who play both instruments is 260. So the range goes from 220, from 220 to 260. The answer is D. Answer is not E. It's the exact same setup as the problem that we just finished, number 5, exact same setup. Even the answer choices are laid out in the exact same way. They're just different numbers. That's all. So that was number 6. Or rather, that was number 7 that we just did. No, that was number 6. Of course, it can be 7. It has to end at 6 because it has to end at even number. Tomorrow, we'll do number 7 and number 8. And tomorrow, again, we're dealing with Venn diagram, but with a little twist in it, where we'll encounter the notion of not double counting, which, which is what we're encountering here, not double counting, but we'll encounter a situations where we'll run into a situations where we'll find ourselves triple counting something or somebody. We will be counting them three times because they happen to possess three characteristics. And we must avoid at all costs double counting. We mustn't count anything more than once. We cannot count them twice just because they possess two qualities. And similarly, obviously, we cannot count somebody three times. That's called triple counting, which is what we're going to deal with tomorrow in the next two problems. Okay? Bye now.